я, наверное, себя не идентифицировала там, как украинец, я вообще об этом не думала. Там слово патриотизм для меня было это что-то такое, ну, ну, сложно, даже я не могу объяснить. Это были какие-то чужие слова. Просто мы об этом никогда не думали. Мы жили, воспитывали детей, строили бизнес, зарабатывали деньги, тратили их, ездили отдыхать и так далее. И когда там происходили какие-то э, такие значимые для страны события, там 2004 год или 2014 начинался, э, мы все здесь живущие смотрели это как просто картинку по телевизору. И мы думали, что нас это никогда не коснется. The question is, why are we here? And the short answer to this question is, because there is a war here in Ukraine. A war we could not imagine after the fall of the Iron Curtain and the collapse of socialist dictatorship in Europe. A war which has claimed more than 10,000 lives. A war which has displaced about 2 million people, made them homeless. A war which destroyed countless families, their properties and their livelihoods. A new security policy for Eastern Europe, question mark. Uh, do we need a new security policy? And if so, how and why would it differ from the old version? There are uh, two equal threats to the world, and it is written in the communique of all those countries, all the NATO members, heads of state, signed it and confirmed it, and they've put terrorism and Russia on equal basis. We should understand that what Putin did in Crimea, he can easily do in any Baltic state. Uh, the Crimea issue is, is very central to, to the Russian regime. So if they don't build, build this, uh, this bill, uh, bridge from, from Russia to Crimea, then the whole Crimea project becomes unsustainable, and they may decide to, have this, to fight a war from the Donbass to, to Crimea, which would be a huge war, 500 kilometers, Mariupol, Berdyansk, Melitopol. Basically, the Ukrainian state collapses. What is NATO going to do with that? Many in Russia, including our future uh, great leader, Vladimir Vladimirovich, decided in their hearts that never again uh, not meaning never again won't have any colonial wars, but never again will Russia be humiliated and defeated in such a nasty fashion. And look where we are today. The Russian government is very skillful in propaganda and very skillful in formation uh, warfare. They, they convince uh, majority of the population in Russian Federation itself that uh, uh, in Ukraine this is fascist uh, regime, the Nazi coup uh, occurred and uh, that is why they were supposed to go and to protect Russian speaking population and uh, to take historical part of Russia, uh, of Crimea. And this propaganda and using very skillfully the mass media uh, have uh, some results. I wouldn't tell all of those who are on occupied territory uh, do believe in this, but the uh, respected amount of them. Самый серьезный бой начался вот с этого места, и вот перед вами сзади находится здание разбитое. Там была больница. Боевики попали э, с, с автоматов в заправку. Заправка взорвалась, соответственно, загорелись машины, люди живьем сгорели прямо в раз. Самая большая трагедия нашего города в том, что мы не смогли уберечь мирных жителей, которые, ну, к сожалению, оказались заложниками этой ситуации. Никто не транслировал ни радио, ни телевидение, ни местная власть не говорили, что на самом деле происходит. Поэтому очень многие местные жители, у них было ощущение, что их бросили. 
бросили, бросила страна, бросила Украина, перестали платить пенсии. Славянск оказался заложником этого всего, и жители, которые тут здесь жили, они ну, чувствовали себя брошенными. Должно пройти много времени, пока не пройдет травма внутри всех людей, которые покинули Донец, которые пережили лишение, травму эту. И сегодня каждый видит по-своему развитие этой ситуации, и у каждого есть свое мнение по этому поводу. Единого какого-то видения будущего его, к сожалению, сегодня нету Ни у кого. Потому что никто так за три года не смог решить вопрос, как же нам урегулировать кризис на Востоке. The dilemma with NATO membership is that probably Georgia and Ukraine will only get into NATO when they will not need it anymore. There is no real implanted in decision-making procedure uh, possibility for the military part of NATO to go ahead immediately. They will wait for those uh, political consultations. Autonomy meant on that time when it was created in 2015 that we should have the capability to take an action if the US is not very much willing to join us. But on principle, it was projected in agreement with the United States. Today, we may have a situation in which we'll have to take action as Europe in disagreement with the United States. Estonia may be now more protected by its EU membership by, than by its NATO membership because, um, you know, the uh, Russia would, would maybe love to demonstrate to NATO that it is not a, um, a reliable alliance by, by occupying some, some small part in eastern Estonia, but it would then have to fear EU, uh, um, tougher EU sanctions. Putin is constantly looking at the weakest links. Uh, he is always proposing, you know, meetings, uh, investments, uh, special relations for EU leaders that he thinks uh, could be the weakest. Real ability uh, to show decisiveness of uh, deterrence must include, first of all, countries who have special relations with, or at least seem to have uh, special relations with Russia, namely France, Italy, Germany, etc. They must have their troops close to the front line, front uh, state. Then. We can together convince Putin. With these forward troops uh, in these in these countries, the Russian narrative internally becomes, you know, the paranoia becomes more plausible. And you know, and the question is, you know, who is going to who is going to pay for this paranoia? Are these going to be Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, or Poland, or Georgia and Ukraine? There is no magic rule or there is no magic weapon a military can use in a war, especially in a conventional war, uh, to win the fight. And particularly when the enemy is so much bigger than you are uh, and so much brutal and so much capable of anything. Uh, the only chance to win this war is when militaries and civilians are on the same page. The problem in our societies is not only Russia or their propaganda. I think the problem is very deeply uh, we, amongst ourselves, Ukrainians, Georgians. There is a very common uh, understanding that Ukraine started rebuilding its own nation actually after the Crimea was lost and after this war. In Ukraine we have two parts of nation. One majority, this is very developed civil society with the deep roots of democracy inside, which even can go uh, against the machine guns and to stop dictatorship. But uh, Maidans, they might stop dictatorship, but they cannot build democracy. Building institutions and uh, uh, changing people's minds on those in uh, institutions uh, is a difficult thing because underneath the institutions are values on, and values don't fall from heaven. I think that's where the problem is because if the democracy is fragile, if the nation is fragile, if the uh, uh, path uh, you are on uh, is not value based and uh, the population does not support it entirely, if there is no agreement amongst ourselves, then 
Russia or any nation for that matter, finds a fertile ground to fight you. And they always will find supporters of this cause. So we need to work more with our own people than responding to what Russia says. Problem of the Slavic is that people don't trust the power. И весь этот 100-тысячный город в едином порыве говорит о том, что все власть делает не так. Но если она все делает не так, то нужно что делать? Для того, чтобы они поверили друг другу, нужно их объединить какой вокруг какой-то цели. А, ну и сейчас наша задача, задача номер один, о том, чтобы объединить общество, не просто общественные организации, а объединить самих людей, вселить в них надежду о том, что это все закончится однажды, и мы сможем жить в другом городе. If Ukraine uh, grows economically, like the rest of Europe, if Ukraine gets more and more democratic and stronger institutions, the Russian population will look envious to what is happening in the Ukraine and will not be content with being ruled by a tyrant like Putin. In the eyes of Kremlin rulers, the danger persists, continues to be, even if Ukraine is not a member of NATO because the existence of a flourishing Ukraine as such is being perceived by the Kremlin rulers as a danger, as a permanent danger, which has to be eradicated. Russia is never as weak as it seems to be, but as never as strong as it pretends to be. New security policy for Eastern Europe, I, I don't believe, I don't share uh, any notion of any Eastern European security policy to be designed. And uh, yes, there should be one European security policy that goes beyond the traditional European borders and uh, uh, covers uh, much more and covers the free world more than just some geography that we might uh, put on the map. There is a lack of awareness of the problems in Eastern Europe. And in Ukraine. People don't understand that it's not only Ukraine, but that, that it's actually a, a challenge, a danger for Europe, that uh, Europe needs to rethink its uh, security and defense concept. The rest of Europe needs the Ukraine because the way Europe develops economically, politically, Ukraine could be a very, very important contribution to our uh, common uh, future. The Ukraine has a well-educated and strong workforce, which could mean a lot to European prosperity. And uh, Ukraine has a geographical position and a potential po a military power, which can be useful for the collective security of Europe and uh, the NATO uh, area. Когда освободили город, буквально очень много сюда приехало волонтеров, очень много приехало людей со всей Украины, которые готовы были поддержать не только местных жителей, но и местное самоуправление. Имеется в виду школы, садики. Это все было отремонтировано вот в таком подобном состоянии. Там были некоторые школы, и вся Украина в одном порыве собралась и помогла нам. То есть приезжали из других областей, просто волонтерили люди, помогали это все восстанавливать. Такие поступки всегда, ну, в тот момент у меня вызвали просто что, шок, потому что люди без оплаты просто приехали и просто решили помочь. Многие в Славянске очень это поддерживали, весь Славянск был сразу вешан украинскими флагами, и ну, было приятно на это смотреть.